Hi everyone. Today's quick tip is showing you the, the advantages and disadvantages of having a fully modeled object versus a simple object with some freestyle crease edges on it for the purposes of rendering comic style images. I'm using the node setup from the last quick tip tutorial, which is still available for free uh, via my Patreon page. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what I've actually got in my freestyle line set. The first is just plainly called line set. And the difference between the two is that the first one includes these sorts of edge types, silhouette, border, and it's got a, a Boolean operation for silhouette or crease uh, based on the object. It's got a distance from camera modifier with a curve applied to it so that the further away these objects are from the camera, uh, the, the thinner the lines appear. And the second line set is something that just looks at the edge marks, and we're going to look at how those are applied to the surface. Uh, again, this has got a modifier on it, but this is set to linear. Again, it's a distance from camera, so the, the further away these objects are, the thinner the lines appear, so that they're proportional to the thicker border lines in these two line sets. So that's what's going on in the line work layer. Uh, first of all, uh, let's take a look at our setup here. And what I've got, let's go into perspective mode, is a plane for catching shadows, uh, a modeled surface, uh, just a simple sort of a brick wall. And then we've got what looks like just a, a normal plane. But if we went into edit mode, what we'd notice here is that some of these edges are marked green and some are not. These uh, green marked edges have had something applied to them called Mark Freestyle Edge. Now, the way you do this is if I was to, say, select a number of edges, like these horizontal ones, I would hit Control E, and in my Edge Contextual pop-up menu, I would go down to Mark Freestyle Edge. Now, to get a brick pattern, all I've done is I've subdivided this surface uh, just by hitting uh, w to bring up my edge select menu and just gone subdivide a couple of times on which I can then shift select the in-between edges to give myself this brick pattern. So, you know, by shift selecting all of these, control E, mark freestyle edge, uh, all the right freestyle edges are marked. So only these green edges will be picked up by our crease line set to edge mark because our line set has not had this edge mark box selected. That way we've got these two separate edges. Now if I went to my camera view and did a quick render, you'll notice that the borders are much thicker than the creases. Uh, and this is because in our modifier, as well as our thickness set here as base thickness, base thickness is set to two, value max is set to two uh, for these border edges. But on our crease lines, it's not only set to linear, but our thickness is set to one. So if we set our base thickness on the crease line to two and we disabled our distance from camera um, and we did a re-render, you'd notice that now our crease lines are as thick as our border width. And that's not the effect that I'm after. I like to control the inside lines to have a varied thickness um, to the border lines. Now, what's going on with these nodes and why do we get these thick black lines here with these white lines in between on our model surface, whereas the crease lines uh, are only you know, transitioning beautifully from black to white without any kind of distortion on the border? Well, this is what's going on. We're actually using the shadow pass. If I went to uh, our shading node, shadow, you can see that this shadow pass is basically black and white because I've used a sun lamp. But the shadow is actually casting shadows in between the bricks. Okay, so we've got edges, but we've also got shadows inside those edges. Whereas here on this plane, all it's detecting is the plane surface. And so what we're doing with our nodes here is combining, first of all, our shadow pass and 
our combined line work pass and the shadow blocks out any other line work because basically the line work is black, the shadows are black. And so these black lines are sitting on top of the white spaces in the shadow. But if we were to take that shadow pass and use the line work alpha, which happens to be white, and we applied it via an add node, you can see that the line work is reversed only on the black areas. Now, to combine the two, we need to first invert the shadow mat, right? So that this white becomes the factor, uh, the, the positive factor, and the black becomes a negative factor um, for the additional, uh, for the add node here to combine this effect with that effect so that we get the white alpha pass composited over the black pass set inverted as the factor and add as our operation to get this composite effect. Uh, but here is the, the, the problem. See, because we've got these edges in our line work that pick out the edges of the bricks, that's being overlaid on the shadows cast uh, by the light here on the model, not so on the plane surface. And so this is perfect for walls that have to be in the background or any objects where you want to sort of pick out details without having this, this funky kind of border effect. So it works great for things like walls and floor tiles and that sort of thing. Uh, okay, so of course this uh, demonstration file is available to download in this month's free Patreon post. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, you can get exclusive tutorials that expand this sort of knowledge, complete with the downloadable working files. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Oops.